I am no man. Feast on his flag. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. And especially if it's a news site. That's why we try as hard as we can. If we say something that's not factually accurate or if we if we had an opinion that turns out to be not true, we let go back and correct the record. Because it's really important that you get true information from the people you're listening to and the media sources that you trust. That is why I am uh, not surprised to give you this article from CNN, published directly in the wake of Dylan Mulvaney murder-suicide of the brand Bud Light. Bud Light's inclusive ad campaigns are good for business, experts say, published on April 13th, 2023, right in the, the heat of the moment with uh, the Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light boycott. CNN had the temerity to publish that this is a very good thing for Bud Light. The phrase go woke, go broke employed by some conservatives on social media suggests that brands which employ inclusive campaigns are angering a significant portion of their consumers and material drops. But experts say that inclusive campaigns are in fact often lucrative. Really? Okay, how's that working out for you? Tale of two maps, how Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light lost their crown as the king of beers, $20 billion Dylan Mulvaney debacle. Here you can see popular beers in America in the month of April. When, before the Dylan Mulvaney uh, 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 n brand nuking, red means Budweiser, and the pink, grapefruit pink, that's uh, Bud Light. So you can see more than half the country, Bud Light products were the most popular beers. And now look, there's not a single state where a Budweiser product is the most popular beer in the state. Okay? Th th this, this, this is a dead brand at this point. And so in order to add insult to injury, CNN decided, a after lying to its customers, decided to go and to film a video in Nashville going after Kid Rock's bar to see if Kid Rock's bar and the patrons around Nashville uh, were actually drinking Bud Light. My God, this is absolutely and completely beautiful. Check this out. <laughs> A culture war is brewing over Bud Light, dividing beer drinkers as much as the country is itself. Unlike anything I'd ever seen. I don't give a if you drink Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, it doesn't matter. If you don't like what somebody's selling, just don't go there. Stop being butthurt about everything that goes on in the world. I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood. The brouhaha stems from Bud Light's short-lived partnership with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Love ya! The fury from the right, enough to dethrone Bud Light as the best-selling beer in America for the first time in two decades. The controversy has taken center stage in Nashville, where two of country music's biggest stars, Garth Brooks and Kid Rock, have bars just steps away from each other on Broadway. What's fascinating to me is that right here on Broadway in Nashville, Tennessee, the culture wars have come down to two big personalities in this town. It illustrates the way the whole country is responding to the transgender acceptance. Garth Brooks says he plans to carry the beer at his yet-to-open bar. I'm a bar owner now. Are we going to have the most popular beers in the thing? Yes. But I get it. Everybody's got their opinions. But inclusiveness is always going to be me. A block down Broadway, Kid Rock made his feelings known when he posted this video shooting up cases of Bud Light. Despite the online bravado and talk of a boycott, Bud Light was available when CNN stopped in recently. It is not clear if the ban had been lifted or if there ever had been one to begin with. Nashville marketing executive Bill Fletcher says the whole country seems to be engaging in the same heated conversation. With Kid Rock, you have this dark, angry, finger pointing, shooting a gun at a Bud Light can, and Garth Brooks is is, hey, I love everybody and openness and acceptance. And I think it's what uh, you, you've seen in the country, going back to African-Americans, to gay people. Well, now it's transgender. Here on Broadway, where fans from all around the world come to maybe listen to some music and drink some beer, this Bud Light controversy has left a bad taste in a lot of fans' mouths. It's quite simple. People just don't want it shoved down their throat. No Bud Light. Because it's like, I have grandchildren. We don't need to put that in the young kids' heads. 
In Chicago, at Two Bears Tavern, a bar that caters to mostly gay patrons, they also feel strongly about not serving Bud Light anymore. But for the opposite reason, they believe the brand left Dylan Mulvaney alone on an island to face a mountain of hate. To be a true ally means that you don't push us behind the scenes and say, well, I'm going to give you some money, but I really don't want you to be front and center or public. But in some Nashville bars, the backlash against Bud Light was hardly felt. We had one guy who said, I refuse to drink that anymore. One guy. And everybody else in the bar kind of rolled their eyes at him. And there were plenty of bar hoppers on Broadway who were simply ready to move on. Let's move on and, and let, hell, let's party. We're in Nashville, damn it. <laughs> Are you not bothered at all by this Bud Light controversy? You're like, nah. No, not at all. I don't give a shit what they do. Ah, yes, it looks like CNN's really going to hurt Kid Rock by going to his bar and realizing they could order some old, dusty Bud Light that... I don't think Kid Rock ever like officially said was unavailable at his bar. Also, you have investors and you also have stocks of beer. That doesn't mean that anything has been restocked. It probably means that you're just the first dumb to go in and buy Bud Light. Also, CNN proving that they lie to you. CNN proving that they lie to their viewers by saying, oh, we had a lot of people who didn't like Bud Light. They actually took the... Bud Light cans out of the hands of people we were interviewing, but we decided not to show that. That ended up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, so we found some drunk old granny who had a Bud Light hat on and put her on screen. See? Everything's good. Remember, these are the people published this. These are the people who published this headline. Bud Light's inclusive ad campaigns are good for business, experts say. They are liars to you. Liars. Don't believe them. But it is very entertaining to see those, like, unbelievably <laughs> little segments <laughs> on CNN. Oh, man. CNN, Communist News Network. If you don't like communists, you should like, share, and subscribe to our channel. That's how we defeat CNN. And it's how we are able to tell the real news, real truth, real facts. Like, for instance, Bud Light's failing brand that will probably not even exist in a year. Those are facts. It's your boy, Benny. See ya.